My goodness, guys, Jagex is going nuts over there at headquarters because they are cooking so much content for the next year. New skills sailing aside, we have the new region, Volamore. Volamore is looking more and more flushed out every week as they introduce more detailed info about the new content in this region. Volamore Landmass will be released early in 2024, just south of Zaya, with various installments throughout the year. We've already learned a bit about the Fortis Coliseum, the next biggest PVM update. And now they have just dropped a new blog on a new mid-level boss dungeon in Falamore in a place called Rallus's Rise. As always, the blog is subject to receive changes after feedback, so leave your feedback in the comments below. I will go over the new reward blog and then give my personal opinions on the new bosses, mechanics, and the new rewards. First, let's briefly read the introduction to the Perilous Moon update and go over the content proposal. As quoted, Beneath the steep and jagged cliffs of Rallus's rise sits the dwarven town of Cam Turum. Its strong fortifications have kept it safe throughout all of Falamore's history, but now the inhabitants face a new challenge. Lurking below the surface is an ancient temple built to contain powerful entities. Now the earth has been disturbed and the dwarves need your help to keep these strange beings contained. The quest will reveal a new chunk of PVM content aimed at mid-level players. The dungeon holds three deadly demi-bosses. Defeat them and you will re-emerge with some exciting new loot. If you can't tell, this encounter is heavily inspired by the iconic Barrows Brothers, a mid-level combat staple. Unlike Barrows, however, this activity focuses on discovery and exploration. We want you to feel like you're progressing through the dungeon in a meaningful way, learning more about the Falmore's ancient history as you go, we're taking all the best bits of barrels in the Fortos dungeon to create a new, well-rounded adventuring experience. We recommend tackling the dungeon with a combat level of 65 or more. Down in the depths, defense is key, so you want to prepare carefully before heading in. Now that you know what you're in for, let's take a closer look. Here's the overview starting with the dungeon. The dungeon itself is a complex environment. You start at the center of the map and there's four possible corridors to trek. However, only one path will be open per run meaning each trek will feel a bit different. Jagex didn't say that the rooms are randomized, so I will assume the room layout and such is static like the barrels on the ground. With enough practice, you can memorize what's in each of the rooms. But there's various rooms that contain, as quoted, enemies to fight, shortcuts to cross, and opportunities to flex your skilling muscles. There's also instance-only supplies you can get in the dungeon to help you out in this boss encounter alongside a safe room for you to make use of those resources, reminiscent of things like Gauntlet and Dungeoneering, if you've done those before. There are also three bosses you can fight as well in the dungeon. Eating all three bosses will give you the best overall chance at rewards similar to how Barrows works. You can loot without killing the bosses, but the loot would be exponentially worse. The cool thing about this boss encounter is that you can actually do it solo or with a group of players. Jagex also wants to set these encounters in a way that lets each player work towards their own drop contribution. This means only your performance affects your chance of rewards. There is no boosting or griefing either in groups as a result. The bosses are designed mechanically to be around mid-level boss, so I'm assuming the difficulty will be around Serachnus or Grotesque Guardian level. Jagex also mentioned there will be completely new boss mechanics as well, so that will be interesting to see what that is all about. Another concept Jagex wants to focus on during these boss fights is making players prioritize more on defensive gear instead of offensive gear. The boss's attacks will hit three times, but if the first hit splash is a zero, then the other hits will be a zero too. And that also means if you take a zero on the second hit, then the third hit is also zero. Each boss will have mechanics that will lower your DPS the more they damage you. So Jagex is really intent on making defensive gear the meta at this new content. They also gave us a rough estimate of how much damage you would save if you use gear with low defense like rune armor or fire torso versus gear with high defense like barrel's armor. As you can see, barrel's armor in theory will significantly reduce the damage you take, especially on the third hit in the long run, even over bandos. Now there is one caveat though. Torva defense is pretty damn close to Barrow's defense, if not, I think even better. So, I don't know about Torva, but for Bandos, it seems like it's not going to be as good as Barrow's. Now it is time to talk about the rewards. I'm not going to lie, these rewards are absolutely outside the box in terms of what we are used to, especially the last two armor sets. 
there will be three new set of armor and weapons as possible rewards and a new offhand melee shield similar to a defender the three sets of equipment each have four pieces containing a two-handed weapon a helmet a top and a bottom the weapons have a special attack and each set also has a set effect as well like barrel's armor the new offhand melee shield is called the bladed moon we'll talk at, about that at the end so let's start with the first set called the blood rager set the blood rager set is a melee focused gear set the weapon is called the dual makohito i'm just gonna call it the makwa from now on because it's too damn hard to actually try to learn how to say this word anyways it has a decent crush and stab bonus and strength making it a bit weaker than a hosta around its level though it has a 2.4 second attack speed similar to many weapons like the hosta and the whip the armor set effectively makes this weapon a bit stronger than a hosta when fighting low defense creatures i'm assuming it's close to a rapier saldo and mace on low defense enemies and that's probably not on task because if you wear the slayer helm i guess you probably don't have the set effect that's definitely one of those things that jagex might need to reconsider Jagex made a DPS chart to show you how this weapon and its armor set fares against Bandos with a Hasta when fighting tankier creatures as it is the closest substitute. As you can see, it starts getting worse than a Hasta and Bandos once you reach the medium tier of tanky that is available in this game. Specifically, the Makwa hits twice per hit for up to 50% of max potential. And the special allows you to sacrifice 10% of your current HP to raise your damage minimum and maximum to 25% on that hit, meaning a bit more DPS. With the set effect though, the Makwa has a 33% chance for the second hit to land one tick faster, meaning even more damage bonus. The Blood Rager armor on its own is actually quite good. It has the same strength bonus as Bandos, and you also get a helm that gives you four strength, which is better than the Nate it's not, but weaker than things like Face Guard, Serpent, Torva Helm. But its overall defense is quite low. This could prove to be really good midway point grind before Bandos for irons. I'm not really sure if a normal account would really buy this gear. It could be worth in the long run if it's cheaper than Bandos and then you can transition to Bandos but we'll see how the prices go because I cannot predict the future on that. The next gear set is called the Frost Moon set. You might think three armor sets for three respective styles but you're only half right. The Frost Moon set is primarily a magic setup but also focuses a good bit on melee as well. Yeah, I said what I said, it's true. So the weapon for this set is called the Spell Spear, fitting name. It has solid magic stats and pretty good melee stats as well, particularly its 5% damage boost to magic and 30 magic accuracy with 71 strength and 70 stab at a three second attack speed, similar to most staffs. This weapon's special attack will boost your attack's accuracy and damage by 1% for every tick, your enemy is still bound. So if you use a special attack on a target that still has 20 ticks on their bound timer, like let's say it was Ice Barraged, then the attack will gain 20% more accuracy and damage, and will also remove your opponent's bind as a drawback. The Spell Spear will require good timing to make the most out of the special. It didn't clarify if the special is a main attack or a spell, but I am going to assume it's a melee attack because the armor set gives you a bit of strength bonus, and the armor set effect also gives you a 10% chance to ignore attack cooldown on your next hit for a Gmaw-like special effect. This special attack does have some potential, I would say mainly for PvP, because you don't often freeze targets in PvM and then use a melee attack on a boss rafter. So if it does come into the game as is, ask your favorite PvP peers on the viability of this armor set for PvP. So the frost armor stats by itself is pretty solid. It's the same magic accuracy as Aram's, with similar defense, so it will probably be a good alternative grind to arms for those not feeling barrels on the iron. If it's good for PvP, it might be worth buying, but for regular players, you might just skip the set, unless it's cheaper than arms. I'm not really sure. Again, I cannot predict the price. This gear won't compete with Virtus, though, or Ancestral, that's for sure. Next is the Eclipse set. This set is primarily focused on range. But for some reason, it has some strength bonus, like pretty decent ones too, like better than Obsidian. And weaker than Bandos, of course. The weapon for this set is called the Eclipse Atlat Toll. I'm just going to call it Eclipse because it's badass and easier to say. But this weapon is very similar to a Magic Shortbow, same attack speed. 
The weapon for this set is basically a stronger magic shortbow called the Eclipse at Lato. I'm going to call it Eclipse. This weapon does have a special attack and a set effect that is tied to a new mechanic called Burn. It has an impressive 87 attack accuracy. The Eclipse is meant to be the middle option between MSB and the Blowpipe. So the Eclipse armor has very similar stats to Black Dehyde with the strength bonus attached to it. The armor set has a 20% chance to inflict the burn status on your opponent, meaning on average 1 in every 5 hits. The burn will deal 1 damage every 4 takes or 2.4 seconds, and it will deal a total of 10 damage per burn effect. Now, the burn effect can be stacked on top of each other up to 5 times, so potentially up to 50 damage in the long run. Meaning, if you get really lucky, you can proc the set effect 5 times back to back almost before the initial burns procs runs out and turn your opponent into freaking fried chicken now we can talk about the bow special attack because it is reliant on the burn mechanic when activated you will use the remaining burn damage your target has and add it to your bow's attack up to 50 damage which is kind of crazy and then it'll take away the opponent's burn however you must be within melee distance of your opponent to use the special so the special attack has sought potential to do lots of damage but being in melee distance could make it very annoying for a lot of situations since in many ranged situations you ideally don't want to be next to the boss like Zeliana or Zebek. This set seems more interesting for PvP than it is for PvM mainly because that special attack definitely has KO potential. I imagine you could probably theoretically maybe even hit like 60 or something with it. A regular player might not buy this setup mainly because the blowpipe is incredibly cheap already and will give you similar or better results in PVMing. This set could be solid for an Iron Man to grind though if you don't feel like doing Zora, as you can get a good range setup on top of potentially getting a good melee weapon and magic setup, but it definitely is delaying the inevitable Zora grind though. And finally, we can talk about the Bladed Moon. This item is untradeable and you need to kill all three bosses for their respective Blade Moon pieces to make this shield. The Blade Moon is essentially a defender that has maxed out its slash stats and sacrifice all of his other stats. It has a whopping 59 slash accuracy and all the other accuracy stats though are not worth mentioning. The bladed moon is technically best in slot if you're doing PVM that favors using a one handed slash weapon like a whip, a fang, a blade or the arc light. This item though won't be dragon or a phrenic defender if you are using non slash styles like crush and stab because it just has less accuracy on those stats and less strength bonus. So let's say you're doing TOB and you don't have a scythe. Well my friend, the Blade of Moon will go amazingly with your one-handed slash weapon. Unfortunately, things like scythe and godswords cannot benefit from the shield's disgusting slash bonus because it's two-handed. Maybe we'll see the rise of one-handed slash weapons again for future PVM that isn't fang because things like whip, art, light, and blade will get way more out of that moon slash bonus. I do not think, however, the Bladed Moon will currently make one hand slash weapons really better than the Scythe anywhere, but there is a chance. We'll find out. The Bladed Moon certainly has a lot of potential though for future PVM as true BIS. Personally, I am most excited about the Bladed Moon. Now it is time for me to critique this update overall. Let's talk about the boss encounter and the boss mechanics. Overall, I would say the dungeon premise and the mechanics are awesome especially because there is a bit of variety each time you go in. I also love the ability to solo or group and get rewarded the same. Also love the defense focus mechanics because literally in the last video, and honestly, I've been saying this a lot in streams, especially that Jagex needs to make defense items more important. And this really looks like an effective way to do just that. I want them to keep exploring that. It's awesome to see that Barrel's armor is likely better than Bandos for this content. Very cool. Definitely no real complaints about the boss related stuff. However, I do have some critiques on the rewards, mainly the three new equipment sets. I think there's potential issue of regular players just not buying these gear sets. The only reason why you would buy any of these weapons and armor is if they're cheaper than their rival gear. For example, if the Blood Rager set isn't cheaper than Bandos, then there's no reason to buy it. Bandos is typically better and less gimmicky to make useful without the need to worry about using things like special attack or having to drain your HP for more DPS. And all the set effects 
requires having all four pieces and one of them is helmet so if you want to use I, I don't know blood rager for slayer you kind of can't really make the most out of it because then you lose the set effect which is kind of a bummer another example is the eclipse bow i don't see many reasons why a normal account would use this over a blowpipe maybe except for pvp like i said unless it's somehow cheaper but the blowpipe is already insanely cheap at the same time i wouldn't want jags to make these items so easy to get just so they can make the prices cheaper than the alternatives this will definitely be a challenging obstacle for jags to balance out Ideally, you want these items to be cheaper than the next best thing, but you don't want it to be so common that it's just way too cheap either. I think these sets of armor will most likely get some changes as I'm not that sold on their special effects and the special attack. For iron players, it's definitely a different story. The new content could effectively allow you to get really good melee, magic, and range gear all in one place. I wouldn't say it completely replaces barrels because you still want a tank set to do this content as mentioned Despite that though, you probably want to invest way more time at the Perilous Moon Dungeon than Barrow's though for building your account to a higher PVM stage as the equipment there is much more useful than Barrow's. The Blade of Moon is pretty balanced I would say. As mentioned previously, I would love to see new content where one-handed slash weapons are more useful. As right now, Scythe beats one-handed slash weapons almost everywhere these weapons are applicable. Overall though, I would say it is a positive update. There will be some equipment clunk, but for the most part, it should fit into the OSR's gear ecosystem fine, especially for Iron Man players. For main accounts though, there might be pricing issues to justify buying these items. Anyways, thanks for watching. Give me that like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe because I will be covering more future updates.